morning. I'm Ann Jones Guider. I'm District 4 Commissioner here in Douglas County, and I welcome you to District Dialogue. Today I have a special guest. Uh, I like for the citizens to put a face behind the job, you know, and we have one of our directors here, uh, Sergeant Major Robert Cowart. Yes, ma'am. Now, you've got a long title, but that's your military title. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you are you still active or, or? No, I actually retired this year, this past year. So this year, it's uh, I've been, I think, beginning of May will be a full year, um, retired. So at twenty four years of service. Well, on behalf of myself and the American citizens, I thank you for your service. Yes, ma'am. And we're lucky so. to have you. We're blessed to have you here in Douglas County. I'm blessed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just uh, if you would, uh, just let the public know a little bit where you served. And uh, of course, you're a Marine. No, no, no. No? Don't talk ugly to me now. Uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm Army. Oh, okay. Yes, I, I apologize. Yes. <laughs> G.I. Joe stuck at an early age, and I just went with it. You yeah. Know. Um, after high school, I went to Alexander. I grew up here in Douglas County. Um, so born in Macon, moved here at age of one, lived in Winston until I joined the Army. So graduated high school, Alexander. Um, went to West Georgia for about a semester and a half, and then said this this is not for me. I don't want to do this. Um, I don't want to do this quite that bad right now. I'm gonna try a different route. I really wanted to join the army my whole life. So, so where all did you serve while you were in the army? My first duty station was, uh, and you got to put in for wherever you wanted to go, like three lists, and you may get them. Um, I picked Germany. Um, I picked Panama and Korea. And uh, the theme was I just wanted to get out of the country and see something new. So uh -huh. I ended up going to Germany um, at the age of 18, and uh, which 18, 21 over there, there's, you know, there's no drinking age, but that's what, that's kind of what the, all the young privates get over there. You, there is no age of, you could see festivals on the side of the road with, <laughs> with very young kids partaking you know um just a different culture different yeah. lifestyle but very interesting and fun too so we uh we traveled around we want to get up like here you would go to panama city or something uh for a vacation there same same distance you would end in maybe two different countries but we drove to switzerland uh learned how to snowboard on matterhorn um, did some cool things like that, castles. So you saw uh, more than just Germany while you were there. Where did you uh, go to after Germany? Um, I came back here to uh, Georgia, went to Fort Stewart, um, down in Savannah, Hinesville uh -huh. area. Um, so Fort Stewart, we were, it's a rapid deployment base down there. It's part of 3rd ID, and, uh, which was interesting because later on, National Guard, uh, job merged with an active duty job and it was third ID uh, used National Guard as a brigade mm -hmm. another brigade maneuver brigade so I've, I've spent most of my time under third infantry division uh, out you, of Georgia you did you were deployed again yes so yes. I was deployed every everywhere I went along the route so while I was in Germany I deployed to Albania um, and that was during Clinton Kosovo Air War. Uh, so the the things that were uh, able to shoot and blow up Kosovo, they couldn't defend themselves very good. So we would we were their close, uh, you know, security, mm -hmm. and we would go where they go, move every two days mm -hmm. at about two o'clock in the morning, and uh, and you know it set up and and smash another grid square kind of thing. Um, but you also went to Afghanistan, didn't you? I did. Afghanistan yeah. here recently. I've been back two years. Um, yeah. And I did that with 40th Brigade and 3rd ID um, yeah. together. 
Um, I did Iraq uh, in 2005. It was a scout platoon here out of Douglasville off Church Street. Mm -hmm. um, there was uh, about 30 of us that deployed. Um, so it was about probably 20, 26 that returned. Um, and out of those 26, maybe another six that didn't return yeah. the way they left. I don't think any of us are the way yeah. we were before we left. I um, can't imagine. Now, you also received several awards. Yes. Uh, Medals. I, would, I, I did. Um, you know, I was very fortunate, fortunate to be here right now. Um, you know, we served with some some Douglasville citizens that went to um, that were in the same grade, same class as me, and uh, you know, just great, great people, great citizens, and not all of them made it back. Mm -hmm. uh, one in particular is uh, Thomas Strickland from Fair Play, and uh, he's got a big family out there, cousins and a brother, mom. Um, and so it was. Uh, There's a he, lot of Stricklands in. Fair there Fair is Fair. a lot of Stricklands. Mm -hmm. um, none of them are in the developing side of the house, so I guess that would narrow it down a little bit. But Thomas uh, Thomas Strickland was a, a good friend and uh, a great person. And he was killed in action, is what you're yes. saying. Yes. Okay. All right. Here in Douglas County, mm -hmm. you wear two hats. Yes, or three. So, or three. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> let's talk about the first hat, okay. the landfill. Yes, ma'am. Um, now, you worked under Gary when yes. Gary was here. Gary Jenkins was my boss, he, uh, and honestly, I say he he gave me a, a, a break. You know, it was that that opportunity to show I can move, I, I can do, man, I can be in the management field, I, and I'm comfortable with that. Um, so... He asked me point blank, what do you think about uh, doing my old job? Yeah. And I didn't know Gary at all. Um, I'd done a couple projects and I worked for James Worthington yeah. um, in the engineering department. And so I did a few jobs that I would oversee for them and, you know, seemed, seemed all right. But I told him mm -hmm. straight, straight up, sir, what do you do? What is your job? <laughs> and, you know. So no, now you're over the landfill. Yes. And you direct everything that goes on in the landfill. And let me, you know, a lot of people have a misconception about what all goes into our landfill. They, they think oh, yes. that a household trash or garbage goes into the landfill, and it doesn't. No, so could you explain just what, what we keep and what we farm out or we ship out somewhere else? Yeah, absolutely. So we, Douglasville, um, at Cedar Mountain Landfill, we have a, we do not have a lined landfill. So um, that means there's a liner that goes under. To uh, protect the water. To protect anything table. from yeah. going down to the water table, um, polluting <coughs> or getting in a stream and, and going downstream or upstream, just contamina contamination. Mm -hmm. um, so we are a C and D. That is construction, uh, mm -hmm. demolition. Um, so it's basically anything that's wood, um, anything you'd use building, uh, just not any garbage. No, no liquids, no hazardous material, anything like that. Uh, that is what actually goes into the ground. Everything else that would go into your garbage can, your Kirby, or any uh, you know commercial garbage truck service that goes into the transfer station, and it is shipped somewhere shipped directly in out South to. Georgia? Uh, <laughs> uh, we send it north oh, to really? uh, Rock Mart, okay. um, and that is where. But they send it south. You're yeah. right. Um, so that's uh, Republic is our our company, um, and it's it's basically a trucking company when it comes to a transfer station, but. So, uh, like uh, old appliances, mm -hmm. you you accept them, and yes, I think somebody picks those up and they replenish or whatever. Yes, ma'am. Uh, um, uh, tires. We we'll take them five dollars a piece, and, and then that's what it cost us to get them, another guy to pick them up. And then they do whatever they, they do. They take with them to them. a place that either shreds them. 
or uh, recycles them for a different use. But a lot of them will shred them, pull all the metal out, and use it for, you know. Asphalt. Asphalt uh, for uh, the rubber mulch mm -hmm. look, um, stuff that doesn't rot, you know, mm -hmm. and it looks... It looks the same, so there's there's some creative, you know, options out there. It's yeah. just tires are they're tough to deal with, um, you know, and a lot of people don't take them because of it. So, well, um, uh, we don't. We have a recycling area out there. Yeah. However, at our curbside, we don't have very few of the. Uh, providers or the uh, services do much of the recycling. Will we ever get to more recycling? A lot of people more interested. In I that. hope so. Um, you know, we have put in for a grant, um, three grants currently, and we're waiting to hear back. Um, state, and it's state it, or federal? Federal. Federal. Um, so what it would it's going to entail there's three compactors one for aluminum one for scrap metal um, paper and we're looking into a, maybe a possible glass as well but so the what it's going to do for us is you know we just get more of the product at into a container we're still the uh, market is not Anywhere where it was, you know, several a couple of years ago before COVID. When I was a tax commissioner many years ago, we used to recycle the old tags that were turned in, especially if they came from out of state and everything. Yeah. And there was, and then we uh, took that money and gave it to the cancer society because we had several women that right. in the courthouse that had some problems with the cancer and everything, and so um, they were. I mean, after we collected quite a bit, because mm -hmm. your your tag is recyclable. That's right. And uh, so, um, but I don't think there's that big of a market for aluminum anymore. We can uh, we can we make some good money, but we will we will save it. So it, it's how you it's how you uh, how you get it. You know. So yes, there's not a big market out there. Same with plastic. There's uh, there's hardly any market but um, scrap metal really scrap good. metals is coming back up yeah uh -huh. there's lots of people make their full living just scrapping metal and they'll come in uh some of them you know we uh during covid uh especially during the lockdown situations all that a lot of the big um the big suppliers they they shut down just like we shut down like most yeah. Everybody, you know, and we stayed open. We just, there, was, there were, it was a, such a challenge because the people that were coming to pick up your product to take it to recycling, they, they didn't, they, they didn't have a place. They shut down. Their yeah. place shut down. <coughs> they had to shut down. Yeah. And, and as just, a domino effect. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, but we were able to get some local, you know, county uh, people that are just, doing it starting out on their own just taking stuff to the scrap metal and you know there's times where freedom of movement through the actual recycling area was more important than the price of uh, getting rid of the stuff you so we, we, you quit trying to make a profit or quit trying to um, to sell and at the highest bidder you're you just need somebody to, uh, hey, I'll give it to you. Just come and get it and get it out of the way. <laughs> that way everybody else can put it their spot. And, we'll, and you know, and that's how, that's how it was. We had yeah. to figure out uh, how to do it without the support that was there before in right. the industry. What about paint? Now, I know the answer to this because my husband, bless his heart, I lost him last year, but um, he was a professional painter. And he disposed of his paint properly, but you tell the public how to do it. Well, we don't. We can't take it here. Um, what about in cat litter? So you could use kitty litter. <laughs> kitty litter. Well, if you take a paint that's uh, that's a, a liquid and it becomes a solid, then we can we can take it. Yeah. Um, so that's but basically you would mix that up and. Um, and so that's a that's a way around it and legal and uh, 
That's what a lot of people do. A lot of people just pour it out in the backyard. Too, a lot of people and do, they don't and it realize finds its it way. goes right into the water. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. It finds its way so, into the creeks. So that's a no-no. Do not do that. Uh, just get you some uh, cat litter, put it in there, and it'll turn solid, and then mm -hmm. you can dispose of it. Um, now, you are trying to modernize the landfill. Uh, yes, ma'am. Go into some details about that. Okay, so um, we have a transfer station uh, that um, it's it's bad. I've, I've said it since I learned it. It's a um, transfer station was built over 25 years ago as a temporary structure. <laughs> uh, yeah, not to exceed five years. You know, is what the initial uh, work up on it and the design was was for. So. You know, 20 years later, past the design uh, desired end state of that, we're still operating out of it. Yeah. Um, so there's numerous patch jobs, structural problems that we address on a yearly basis, and we just kind of roll with it until we see something that breaks, um, then we replace it. Now explain what a transfer station is. Yes, ma'am. So just a tra transfer station yeah. is... Uh, earlier, when I said the C and D is the only thing that go into Douglas County, everything else goes into a transfer station, which is a building, a, ten, a metal building, with a tunnel where a tractor trailer drives in. It has an open top container. Um, it looks just like a, a normal 18 wheeler size trailer. It just doesn't have a top, or it rolls off. Mm -hmm. uh, they pull it in and park. Um, and we have all the all the trash uh, haulers come in and they dump right there as, as well as independent, you know, mom and pop operations. Yeah. And then just you, if you wanted to go to the transfer station, you can go down there and dump your stuff. You know, most people don't. But, uh, you know, we put a new concrete floor in there recently and that was that was, it was huge. a mud floor. It was that. a mud floor with <laughs> holes in it, and it was it was very dangerous, um, you know. And these, I was getting re complaints about it daily. I had I had people stop what they're doing in a trash industry, especially a, a smaller business. It's they're on the go. They're the faster they can get out, get more trash, get it in, dump it, and get back out again. That's the more money they make. So for these guys to get out of their truck and come knock on my door and say thank you for for the concrete and uh, <laughs> and I say yes I appreciate it they're like I don't no we appreciate it you know it's it was dangerous and I, we know this is still not the end state we we need a new transfer station and we've been talking about that in the near future hopefully you know the board is going to find a way to see to put that in place okay. so I'm I'm just going to keep on it until it gets there or somebody gets rid of me, one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else you want to share about the landfill? Um, no, well, the landfill is just a very complex, you know, there's so many different things that are happening at once and people don't realize it, but um, before you... We used to call it a dump. We <laughs> used to call it a dump, so did I. <laughs> And you know, I, I would tell you, I, I learned how to drive um, uh -huh. my dad's truck on a dirt road that was very, very close to the landfill now, yeah. but it was across the street. And uh, we'd get off the main road and I'd say, come on, come on. And he'd let me drive. Um, and I'd get up there. But I would just say, you know, what I learned about the landfill to even be in operations, you have to be certified from uh, University of Georgia or another certified landfill operators Y'all course. Are tested. Yes, and we have quite often. We have EPD uh unannounced visits yeah. a couple a year. Uh and we've had three one hundreds for the first time. All right. I never saw a one hundred until must be the leadership. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh I've got a lot of great guys and girls <laughs> at the landfill and they've they're the difference in a dump and a uh, actual landfill. So now the big cardboard that you see back behind every 
a retail store and places mm -hmm. like that. Do people bring those out there, and do you have a recycle area just for that? Or well, well, remember I was do talking they about the. Have someone pick that up. From it's them? just a vendor. Usually, one person, one company, um, would get that, and they would come and pick it up at, at at the best time. When I first came over here, um, we had a compactor that Pratt Industries uh, provided, and we had community service workers that would just help feed it, you know, so people would unload their cardboard and you put it in there and it'd smash it flat. And then mm -hmm. once it was, it was hit its limit, they would send a truck out to pick it up and give us a check for, you know, once they had it back in so the way. So it is recyclable. It is. However, the, the market tanked. Uh, it went very far down. That. I do too. So at that the fills up a at our best, um, we're well, still not going in there. But uh, it at our best, we could make anywhere from twelve to fourteen hundred dollars a month and never touch it. You know, and uh, and then now it's it, we've had to pay to t get it taken away. Oh now just about a lot of the, our stuff we'll take out to SLM or somewhere you know, that we can find that will take it. And yeah. so you still got wear and tear hours of, you know, for your uh, driver and people mm -hmm. away from the landfill. So. I've seen pickup trucks with sticks on the sides mm -hmm. loaded the up pain. with all this uh, cardboard yes. going down the road, just waiting for it to fall off. They you know? did not come <laughs> to the landfill. <clears throat> but yeah, it's amazing how many of those dualies you can see in the whole side of it's just laid over as the uh, you know <laughs> yeah. there's something it, cardboard's not supposed to go 20 feet high in the air for a reason yeah but uh okay another hat that you wear at the county yes ma'am is road repair uh the side of the road repair yes ma'am potholes mm -hmm. things like that yes, uh, you are separate from the paving department uh, under Miguel Valentine. Well, we are DOT um, maintenance and construction. So, and with that, it's everything on the right of way is ours. So, all potholes, grass cutting, um, any kind of repairs to an existing road, either we go out and do it because I have the pavers, I have the actual equipment and the people. I'm eight people short still vacancy wise mm. which is an entire paving crew however um we have the equipment uh, almost all we we need a milling machine but those are those are expensive they're about six hundred thousand a pop but well expect uh, okay i know what millings are because oh. we use them a lot in, mm -hmm. in my district uh millings are the old asphalt that's been taken up when they're resurfacing. Yes. However, when they take it up, it's in big clumps. But we can reuse it once those clumps are all ground up. That's right. And we can lay them um, on dirt roads, especially in the summertime. That that's the that's only key. time that that's you the key. you have to lay the millings mm -hmm. um, during the heat of the summer. Right. Because the hotter it, it is, the better, because they kind of, they fuse they form together. together yep. And it's almost like a paved road. Yes, ma'am. Uh, but uh, we've had trouble in the last year of finding a company that will chew those big clumps up. Yes, and so that has really put a stop uh, this year on our laying or use of the millions. Yes, so but has. we're gonna correct that, aren't we? Absolutely. We have <laughs> we a have stockpile. <laughs> uh, we have a stockpile out at the landfill and off of uh, Chicago Avenue and at the uh, DOT of, yard. Of already of ground? Not ground. Well now we have a small amount of ground. Okay. Maybe enough for mm -hmm. about a mile. Okay. Um so that's definitely mm -hmm. gonna go down um in your district <laughs> for sure. <laughs> we were out there yesterday. Yes, ma'am. We were trying to target <laughs> some of the uh the worst areas of uh Tyree out uh -huh. there in the rural area. Um and then, you know, we 
we can stockpile it. Another good thing, I think I told you, um, the only good news I, I have for you about millings is that they don't go bad. Okay. <laughs> so, but unfortunately, yes, everybody's str struggling with uh, industry going down and coming back up. And uh, what's happened is those milling companies that have the grinders, they send them out and, uh, you know, they're, they're so overtasked right now that yeah. they're only taking huge So we may have to buy already ground up milling. Well, yes. Which will cost more. Yes. However, it's better it's than It's an option. Enough. It, yeah, it's yes. an option. Yes, ma'am. Um, so um, if I have a pothole, where's your cell phone? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> which one? I, how do I get in touch with you? <laughs> Uh, you would call the uh, transportation. There's a there is a like transportation hotline. Uh -huh. um, it's on CelebrateDouglasCounty.com. Do you know that number? I and they can put it up uh, along the screen. Yeah, yeah but they will find out what that number is and scroll it oh, as that, we're talking. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, so that that goes in. We have. Uh, we have a few people from other departments. So Miguel has, he, he has access to look at it as well as I do. Um, my team down the hall is um, Becky and uh, Jessica. So that's two, two full-time office um, assistants and uh, office managers. They, they pretty much respond to everything um, unless it's a, hey, They'll give it the first shot if unless somebody wants to speak with me directly, then and I get that too. That's fine. I would ask that you just be patient, and I will call you back. Um, but for the most part, those uh, those ladies can handle, you know, 95, 90, 98 percent of all questions, and and a lot of it is just routing it to the correct place the right resource and most of that we get is really g dot it's a state road or it's something of that nature so it's a uh, and then it, there's the there's lots that go into everything you know the, the zoning the um, code enforcement has different you know things of what can be on the right of way what can't be uh, yeah. different ordinances mm -hmm. for different counties but you know we we try to make it I ran into a, a paving crew on Stuart Mill Road yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, that is C.W. Matthews. Yes, they are the and contractor. They, and they're the ones that get it done. They do. That is <laughs> they're who. the ones that rebuilt the bridge in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, but they were paving, and of course they had one lane open. Right. And the other lane. I got they, some complaints. Well, um, you, you can't repair roads without That's keeping correct. the traffic off of it. <clears throat> and you've correct. got to, your safety issues too, that you protect your men yes, from getting hit and everything. But um, you mentioned about the state roads. You know, I get more complaints about the ramps on I-20 where the trucks have put all these holes mm -hmm. in on the, the sides. sides. And that's a federal, mm -hmm. that's a federal issue. Do we have any pull with them that we can report? Y'all need to fix these these ramps. Uh, post road yeah, is awful. Post road is absolutely yes, awful. Um, but the trucks, it's not the trucks fault because the state of Georgia changed the law where they have to stop they do, yeah. within They're so long. many uh, hours and there's right. no place for them to park. Right. Uh, Cause all the truck stops are full and so we've had uh, several things come up in uh, before the Board of Commissioners where people are putting up lots just for overnight uh, trucks yeah. and everything. <clears throat> but uh, we do need to fix those big old potholes because if there's no, not but one lane of traffic like on Post Road, yes, and people are turning that way and they want to go, uh, it's you rough. Know, go around the traffic mm -hmm. that's turning that way, and so they get in those gullies. <laughs> yes. Some of them are deep enough to get a, a normal get car get, you get, get hung get up on. <laughs> yes, ma'am. But um, 
So uh, you're not involved in the paving? No, uh, we are. Oh, y'all are? Okay. Yep. And how far along are we in the 22 so uh, program? We're about 45% uh, finished. We got a late start this year. We did get a late start. Mm -hmm. um, it is, you know, we have, we contracted it all out this year. Um, C.W. Matthews is doing the work and they're doing a good job. We have people, uh, our quality inspectors, um, they're out there watching every day. They're looking, uh, they're taking, getting, <coughs> keeping up with the amount that's coming in and uh, any kind of, you know, anything. There's a daily report on what all happened. Mm -hmm. um, so stay on top of it. They did that with uh, a few other roads in the county and where we had some bad problems. Um, you know, Mount Vernon gave us a, a hard time with bad concrete, bad asphalt, you know. Um, and that's, that's pretty, it's pretty hard to deal with. It's, it's not us, it was a different company doing it, but what they were receiving from the, the their plant. Their vendor, yeah. Yeah, um, and they're a major, you know, player in the, in the game. And, you know, they, their product was a result of them taking a bad product from yeah. the plant. So um, that's been addressed, but it was a long, it was a long time. I know a lot of people, if you're listening, you're off Fairburn Road or Mount Vernon area, there was uh, there was lots of problems. We had them go mm -hmm. back out and cut it out, remill it, redo it, you know, and basically said we'll, we'll be here until, you know, until it's perfect because that's what we inspect and that's what we want. Mm -hmm. um, that's the standard we're holding them to. Now, do you, are y'all doing any of the... It, the crew that works for the county are they mm -hmm. doing any of the subdivisions not not this year <laughs> not uh, this we, year no we have done it before um and i think what we have is i've been talking back and forth with uh development control and with james worthington and uh, travis mcdonald they have some bonds that come up on some old neighborhoods uh so we're probably going to get geared up and and send our guys to pave those, depending on the the price of everything. Bond. What, bond. bond. Oh, the, bond. it's not sticking. No, no, no. no. <laughs> the actual bond at the bank for making sure. Oh. So remember um, 2008, the, that big flood come through, 500-year flood. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and uh, so we, we still have some neighborhoods in the county that are, just high and dry because you know a lot of builders went bankrupt and it went to the back to the bank and you know and now some of the banks closed down so we have one Stonehaven in particular it's off of uh, Big A Road towards 166 uh -huh. and it's set vacant for a long time but now builders are in there and they're it's they're they're going as fast as they can, but that road never received a top course on there. So, and you want to, you want to put that final product on there to where it looks perfect when the neighborhood's done. So, 75% built out is the what we try to keep as a number. However, you can't, you can't do that because at this you point. can't, you can't be building. With all the at the back equipment. of the uh, subdivision and have all these concrete trucks exactly. and everything uh, driving on. So they just put the base down to begin with. Correct. <coughs> and and that's, then once that's the subdivision tougher. is built out, right. about 75%. That's, that's what we look at. That's, our, that's, that's how James, you know, in Douglas County Ordinance goes, is 75% or more than we can put the top course on. Yeah. But in these instances, we probably need to. We look at a. Hey, we got a. We got the bond. We got money for it. Let's and we need. We have a crew that can do it. We need to pave it and then maybe hold the builders uh, responsible for any damages. Yeah. At this <coughs> point, or you got to you got to get what you can. Sometimes you know, and it's just yeah. We've had to call a, in several bonds. Oh yes, uh, ma'am. When the uh, uh, builders. Yeah. Yeah. Go away. <laughs> a lot of them went away. <clears throat> uh, anything else you want to say about the the paving and the potholes? I just, um, 
You know, the guys, <coughs> DOT, I've recently, this is the newest uh, hat for me to wear, is uh, working with DOT. I've done it before in my background. I, I worked at <coughs> Tennessee Valley Authority, and, uh, and I worked at an engineering firm um, in Nashville and Knoxville. But say that, we did... We did roads, and then we did subgrade for found, you know, for Kia plant down in Lagrange. Oh, Lots yeah. of site work <laughs> kind of thing. So it it played into this. Um, however, with this this change, I kind of found the mix up with the uh, I guess the uh, directors um, the way the last super or uh, county administrator Sharon. Subedan, <laughs> when the way she tried to um, uh, really redesign Revamp. the structure, Revamp yeah, the and and she did departments and, and it it went uh, it went well. But with that, uh, mm -hmm. that was the deciding factor of me getting uh, half a DOT basically. So yeah. you have uh, these guys. I just want to brag on them. They're they're amazing. You know, I've got good leadership um, in there from low young guys uh up to to old guys that are great too yeah. they just you know and uh they work together really good to re respect each other so we have eight to nine vacancies since i've been here um and that's low you know operators one two that kind of thing and it, you know, mm -hmm. they, people can make that same money doing something else. That You're is also over fleet. Yes, ma'am. So that's where we're at here. <coughs> this fleet is downstairs. Yeah. Um, and I'd forgotten about that. Oh yeah, uh, Ross. So won't. you wear three, <laughs> four hats. <laughs> mm -hmm. I got a few hats. Yeah. Yeah. It's all yeah. right. I like them. I'm not afraid of the challenge. I just uh, keep saying, "Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir," and I'll do it best I can. Um, you know, and I actually, I just find that if you, what is the objective? What do y'all want? The board of commissioners, what do the citizens want? How do we get there? That's the. But that's it sounds easy. like we need to do some recruiting. We uh, do. I know uh, it's hard. Everybody's having a, a hard time getting yep. uh, people to apply for the jobs. And so we need to work on your department because you, uh, we are. You, you're very crucial to yes. the citizens yes ma'am we and we've to the doing. operation of the county because y'all work on all the sheriff's cars and mm -hmm. things like that so yes. um very important fire trucks <coughs> um, yeah. fire trucks we, right. yeah you have a special person that just does the fire trucks don't you I do. Okay. All of my people are special, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, that's a good leader for you. Yeah. That's a good leader. Special in their own way, right? Yeah. Um, but yes, we do. We have actually two guys dedicated. Um, it's uh, Brandon and Joseph dedicated to the fire departments, and that's one whole side of the shop is just for the the fire department, yeah. basically. So ambulances, anything that they need, they come in here. We work directly you know the fire department has a fleet manager just like we have a fleet yeah. manager and the, uh, the sheriff's department does too mm -hmm. um so those those guys cross talk a lot and uh so and to try and just you know there's a lot of times where they're they're taking apart one one uh cop car or, or cruiser and you'll see a skeleton out out back because we've used Every the part, off of and if we <laughs> one car and exactly. put it on another one, and that's that, yeah. we, we had to do that, you know. Uh, there's a lot of problems with still getting vehicles on time, getting them here, and then getting them here with with the right um, with the right software to make them work. <laughs> you know, a lot mm -hmm. of them are just have the chips and the software in to drive the vehicle, but yeah. all the bells and whistles, they're there. They just don't work. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's they'll bring them in. So, you know, obviously Sheriff's Department goes first uh, and our first responders uh, with the ambulance, fire trucks and that mm -hmm. kind of thing too. And we've had some problems with brand new trucks before to fire trucks, cop cars, they're, they're all the, you know, they're not, uh, they don't get to skip just because they're, you know, they're new. They still require, you know, 
they, they require attention, and some of them are just not built the way they used to. So yeah, that, that's more really tough. They're yes, more complicated. Yes, ma'am. You can't just a lot of open the hood and fix something these days. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Keith, uh, Heath, I don't know why I called you Still Keith. Still Heath. Heath. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for what you do here at the county. And again, thank you for your service to your country. Mm, it was my pleasure. This is kind of a sad time for me. This is uh, my last errand uh, here on uh, the uh, Channel 23 uh, as a commissioner. So I will be retiring at the end of this year. So it's bittersweet with me, but uh, I just want to say what an honor it has been to serve this community. And I thank you for your trust in voting for me all these years. And I'm not going very far. I'm going to hang around, you know me. <laughs> so um, I'm going to continue my newsletter, uh, annjonesguider.com. I have uh, uh, like 1,200 following now. So um, I hope that more people will sign up for it. Uh, I just try to keep people in the know of what's happening here and even nationally sometimes and try to bring a little bit of patriotic thing to it. Mm -hmm. I always have a patriotic section to it, too. But thank you, Douglas County, for uh, allowing me to serve you all these years, and I will be seeing you around. Thank you again.